How did Bran end up becoming king? Did he somehow manipulate events to get himself onto the throne? If so, why and how? Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. If you want regular insight and intelligent debate about Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Westworld and more, then click on the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. When, in the finale of Game of Thrones, Tyrion asked Bran if he wanted to be king, he said, why do you think I came all this way? It's typical of the kind of enigmatic thing Bran had been saying recently, but still, he's pretty much saying that he knew this was going to happen. He knew he would be offered the crown, and he had already decided he was going to accept. He just hadn't told anyone. Seeing into the future and knowing what will happen, though, is very different to wanting that to happen and manipulating events to make it so. Which was Bran doing? Well, as much as Bran might say he doesn't really want anything anymore, that's not strictly true. He saw the wheelchair that Deiron Targaryen built for his nephew and wanted it, so he had it built for him. And he did want to be king, or else, as he says, why would he travel all that way? If he knew he would be offered it and didn't want it, he could just say no, or not bother to head all that way down south in the first place. His notion of wanting is actually probably more closely tied into what he thinks must happen, because he's seen it happen in the future. He doesn't think of himself as wanting anything, he's just doing things that he thinks he needs to do in order to make the things he's seen happen. Bran, we have to remember, and he has told us many times, is not really Bran anymore. He's the Three-Eyed Raven. He is the embodiment of the Weirwood Network, and the collection of memories and lived experiences of Westeros. In the books, the way the Weirwood Network, and therefore the Green Seers like Bran who connect to it, experience time is very different to how we experience time. Time is different for a tree than a man, we hear. For men, time is a river. We are trapped in its flow, hurtling from past to present, always in the same direction. The lives of trees are different. They root and grow and die in one place, and that river does not move them. The oak is the acorn, the acorn is the oak. So... Although this is a little bit of a digression and quite mind-bending, Bran is technically not manipulating events to change what will happen in the future, he is doing what needs to be done in the present in order to make the future happen in the way it was always going to. Back in Season 6, Bran intervening in Hodor's past to make him hold the door in the present was just him doing what he was always going to do. Bran never experienced Hodor as anything other than the gentle giant who could only say Hodor, because Bran always was going to go back in time and turn the stable boy into Hodor. The world of Game of Thrones operates in a kind of closed-loop timeline. What will happen always was going to have happened, regardless. The Weirwood Network and Bran know what was always going to happen in the future. Bran just needs to play his part. As Bloodraven said, the ink is dry. So, what has Bran been doing to play his part in making the future he's seen happen? Well, for a lot of the last couple of seasons, he seems to have been focusing on what to do about the Night King and the Army of the Dead. He was the one who saw the creation of the Night King a dragonglass blade in his heart in front of a weirwood tree, and therefore knew or saw or worked out how to uncreate him, a valyrian steel blade in his heart in front of a weirwood tree, and he then made sure that it all happened as he wanted it to. The first thing he did once getting hold of the cat's paw's dagger was to give it to Arya. He then made sure that he himself was in front of the weirwood tree, and when he needed a few extra seconds before Arya got there, he told Theon that he was a good man, bolstering his self-belief and leading to him holding back the Night King for those crucial few seconds. But what else has he done this season? What has he done to influence events in King's Landing? Well, he told Sam to tell John about his true parentage, which started the chain of dominoes falling, because John told Danny, and then Sansa and Arya, and Sansa told Tyrion, and Tyrion told Varys. This broke apart 
John and Daenerys' relationship, and led Danny to think that everyone was betraying her. It played a part, an important part, in everything that followed, including the burning of King's Landing. It wasn't everything that played into that decision, but it's certainly the case that before knowledge of John's parentage came out, Danny was in a strong position and accepting the advice of her advisers not to attack the citizens of King's Landing. And after then, she wasn't in that place. And it's worth noting that although Bran's contribution in the Godswood when John told Sansa and Arya about his true parentage might have appeared neutral, he said, it's up to you whether to tell them. It actually wasn't neutral, because saying it's up to you after John has said that he's not their half-brother clearly implies to Sansa that John has a secret that he's not telling about who he is, and that Bran knows it. If John was okay with Bran knowing it, why wouldn't he be okay with Sansa and Arya knowing? Bran wasn't being neutral there, he was subtly pushing John into saying. Then there is Jamie. Bran's intervention here was to welcome him to Winterfell, ensuring he came to everyone's attention and therefore got a quick trial, and then didn't tell anyone that Jaime pushed him out of the window back in Season 1. It was this intervention, or lack of an intervention, that probably kept him alive. But why? Well, it doesn't seem to have been anything to do with the battle against the Army of the Dead. Jamie played his part in keeping back the Hordes of Whites, to be sure, but I don't think anyone could say that he was pivotal in the real battle to kill the Night King. But he did play an unintentional role later when it came to deciding who would be king down in King's Landing. It was his capture, later by Daenerys' forces, that was the thing that finally made Tyrion turn against Daenerys and free Jaime. It's what made Danny put Tyrion in prison. And Tyrion did two really, really important times in his time in prison. First, he was the person who changed Jon's mind, persuading him to kill Danny. It was a long conversation, and I won't go into details here, but Tyrion basically used Jon's love of his family, his sisters, and persuaded him that the only way to protect them was to kill Danny. So Bran indirectly ensured that Tyrion would be put in prison. The first thing he did was to get Jon to kill Daenerys, the person in possession of the throne, and the second thing Tyrion did was lots of thinking and came to the conclusion that Bran should be made king in her place. But you might say Bran hadn't seen Tyrion for months at that point, and he didn't say a thing in the Great Council before Tyrion started his little speech. How could he have possibly influenced Tyrion to decide to back him for the crown? Well, let's go back to the two really important, but quite overlooked, interactions Bran had with Tyrion up in Winterfell. The first was when Bran told Tyrion his story. It was a cause of much curiosity for me that no one had seemingly asked Bran what had been going on with him to turn him into this three-eyed raven, at least not on camera. With retrospect, this was probably just the showrunners trying to get us to focus on this one occurrence when Bran does tell his story. He told Tyrion. And Tyrion seems to have come to the conclusion that the new monarch had to have a good backstory to help with, well, propaganda, to be honest. So Bran made sure that his story was uppermost in Tyrion's mind while he was thinking things over. And the second time Bran and Tyrion conversed, Tyrion suggested that Bran should be Lord of Winterfell, a powerful role, and Bran dropped in that he didn't want it because he doesn't really want anything anymore. This is important because Tyrion slowly came to the conclusion that the person who was best suited to be king was someone who didn't want the job. Varys said that to Tyrion to try to get him to switch his allegiance to Jon, and after Varys' death, Tyrion says rather dejectedly that Varys had been right all along. He should have listened to Varys. Tyrion couldn't pick John any more for King, that would be too controversial a move after he killed Danny, but he did know one other person who apparently didn't want to rule, and therefore would be a good ruler. Bran also in that conversation, incidentally and innocently I'm sure, mentioned that his wheelchair was the design that King Deron did for his nephew, 
So he ensured that Tyrion wasn't just thinking about Bran as a northerner with no experience of King's Landing. Bran was basically subtly trying to say that he had seen and experienced King's Landing and the life of kings. He understood what it was about. So, if it looks like Bran manipulated events, saying and doing the right thing at the exact right time to get himself into the position where Tyrion would offer him the kingship, he also did it by saying nothing about some really important things. For example, he knew that Daenerys was going to burn King's Landing, destroying all those people. The image of a dragon Drogon flying over King's Landing was one of the visions he saw a few seasons back when he was being dragged out of Bloodraven's cave. He saw it, he knew it would happen, and he did nothing to stop it. Given everything else we know he was doing and trying to achieve, the only possible reason was because he knew it would take that to make Jon turn on Danny. And if Jon didn't turn on Danny, she would still be queen, and there would be no vacancy as monarch. This gives Bran's ascent to the throne a slightly dark twist. He wasn't just manipulating people to get what he wanted. He was knowingly allowing tens or hundreds of thousands of people to die in order to achieve it. Is this really what Bran Stark, Ned Stark's son, would do? Well, this brings us back to one of the points we started with. Bran is not Bran anymore. He is the Three-Eyed Raven. He is as much Blood Raven as he is Bran, and as much every other Three-Eyed Raven there has been. And the Three-Eyed Raven has clearly been planning this even further back than these last couple of seasons. The Three-Eyed Raven chose Bran to be the new Three-Eyed Raven because of who he was. If you stop and think about what happened to Bran Stark, the child, he was brought up to Bloodraven's cave on false hopes that he might be able to walk again, taught magic without being told that it would literally take him over, that Bran Stark would be subsumed within a greater consciousness. Mira Reed was right. To all intents and purposes, Bran Stark, the boy, died in that cave. Why did the Three-Eyed Raven choose Bran for this. Because even without Tyrion's intervention, of the people there in the dragon pit at the end of the whole series, he was actually one of the very few people who could realistically be king. He was Ned Stark's oldest living son and therefore technical heir to Winterfell, and of the other lords paramount, there actually weren't that many other options. Gendry admitted he didn't know how to be a lord, let alone king, the Prince of Dawn had only just become one, people were hardly likely to want to follow Robin Arryn or Edmure Tully, and so on. The Three-Eyed Raven didn't just choose Bran all that time ago because he was a potentially skillful tree wizard. He was one of the few people who could be king once this whole story had come to an end. All that was needed then was to manipulate Tyrion to make that speech in his favour, as we saw. The Three-Eyed Raven chose Bran to be king all the way back at the beginning of Season 1. We just didn't know it. Bran didn't win the Game of Thrones. The Three-Eyed Raven did. Even though Game of Thrones has finished, In Deep Geek will keep on going and expand out into new content. I will continue to cover the books of A Song of Ice and Fire and the prequel TV series when it arrives, and I'm also going to be doing more. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings, Westworld and other great TV shows and books. You may also be interested in my second channel, The Well Told Tale. It's an audio narration channel, and I'm reading the greatest science fiction and fantasy stories ever, from The Time Machine to The Call of Cthulhu, and from Conan to Frankenstein. If you're interested, please click on the link on the left of the screen. Or, if you want even more exclusive audio content, or just want to support the channel, please click on the link on the right of the screen. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.